Hi, I'm Duncan McRae. I'm an associate professor at UC Berkeley, where I teach in the classics department. My main expertise for both my research and my teaching is Roman history. But my real speciality is the study of ancient religion. Why is ancient religion so interesting? Well, I think there's two main reasons, for me at least. On the one hand, the study of ancient religion means the study of beginnings, the beginnings of Judaism, Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, Hinduism, all religions that are still practiced all over the world today and have their origins in the ancient world. I find it profoundly interesting to engage with the deep histories of these religions. But the second thing that draws me to ancient religion is difference. The place of religion in antiquity was very different to the place of religion in the modern world. There's a widespread idea, especially in Western societies, that religion is a matter of personal conscience, belief, and can be separated out from the other parts of life, especially from politics and from economics, that is to say, from public life. In antiquity, on the other hand, religion was everywhere. It was part of all sorts of the human experience. All the other domains that you cover in sixth grade history for looking at the ancient world all touched in some way on ancient religion also. For this video, I'm going to concentrate especially on my own personal area of expertise, which is religion in the Roman world. We may think of the Romans as famous for other things, perhaps as builders of a vast empire, or as builders of impressive monuments like the Colosseum and all those famous straight roads. But the Romans themselves claimed that it was their religion that set them apart. In this passage from a speech to the Senate, the politician and famous public speaker Cicero claims, We Romans are not superior to the Spanish in population nor we to, do we beat the Gauls in strength, nor Carthage in acumen, nor the Greeks in technical skills, nor can we compete with the natural connection of the Italians and the Latins to their own people and land. We Romans, however, outstrip every people and nation in our piety, our sense of religious scruple, and our awareness that everything is controlled by the power of the gods. He was probably exaggerating a little, but Cicero wanted his audience to put religion at the centre of being Roman. Of course, he was at the very top of Roman society, and it's likely that he was thinking of the grand religious sacrifices of the Roman Republic, where the state itself organised worship of the gods. But religion does seem to have been a central part of life for people all across society, this remarkable object, which is now in a museum in Baltimore, Maryland, is the remnants of a religious ritual that took, in, took place in Rome sometime around uh, the time that Cicero was speaking. That's the middle part of the first century BCE. This is an iron nail driven through lead sheets. We think it was found in a grave just outside the city walls of Rome. Prayers were written on these lead sheets, which asked the gods of the underworld to harm the household of a former lover, or perhaps a romantic rival. The prayers promise animal sacrifices to the gods if they uh, fulfil this, this request and help the writer. And the writer was almost certainly a woman. Here, what we see is religion as part of the romantic life of a Roman person. You may be thinking that this sounds rather like magic, and these sorts of objects can certainly be understood that way. But most modern experts tend to stress that this sort of ritual was a regular part of religious life, of communication with the gods. The famous archaeological site of Pompeii, a Roman city buried in a volcano in 79 CE, gives us another example. This is the inside of a bar on one of the main streets of the city. Those jars set in the counter were probably used to serve food and wine. And down there at the end of the bar counter was a small shrine painted on the wall. 
we see the genius, the personal god of the bar owner, in the centre, standing between the two lares, the gods that pr protected specific places, in this case, essentially the gods of the bar. On the right is the god Liber, or perhaps Dionysus, uh, to use his Greek name, that's the god of wine, an appropriate enough choice for a bar. And on the left is Mercury, the god of commerce, of business, who comes bringing his money bag in hand. We can think about this from the perspective of the customer. As they bought their drinks, they would have been in the presence of the deities of this bar. And as they paid their money over the counter and they took a sip of wine, perhaps, they could have connected their actions with the appropriate gods, Mercury and Liber. These are just a couple of examples, but I think the point will be clear to you. Ancient religion was everywhere, a significant part of lived life, and not only a matter of personal conscience. I'll stop here, but I hope that this video may have provoked uh, some thoughts about how religion might fit into uh, your sixth grade history curriculum. I've put together some sources and further reading related to what I've been talking about, and they should be available through the History and Social Science Project. Thank you. Goodbye.